On this edition of Lexington Now, part two of 2023, a year in review. Happy New Year and welcome to Lexington Now for the week of January 1st, 2024. I'm Neil Noah. We continue our look back at 2023 with a trio of stories focused on recreation. First, the opening of a welcome addition along the new Town Branch Trail. Splash at Charles Young Park. I am Colonel Charles Young of the United States Army, 10th Cavalry, and I'm here to open the ceremony for the celebration of this park. Many of you know a little bit about my history. I was the third African-American to graduate from West Point and I had a long career in the United States Army. And at the time of the start of World War I, I was the highest ranking African-American in the Army. Today's a big day. We are here to officially open Splash, a large water feature that's bringing water play space to the East End neighborhood and downtown. Splash connects the park's new playground, resurfaced basketball court, and community center to the Town Branch Commons Trail, making Charles Young Park a cornerstone of the neighborhood as well as the community. Splash has something for everyone. And now I know eventually y'all are gonna take your shoes off and get wet, right? It's designed for children of all ages and abilities. It also offers a comfortable, relaxing area for parents and for those who stop in for a break off the Town Branch Commons Trail. As you can see, it's already very popular. <laughs> As you can see throughout the splash pad, Brigadier General Charles Young is described as humble, courageous, and determined. The timeline surrounding the perimeter of the splash pad details the history of his remarkable life. I keep inheriting wonderful things that was left by Council at Large Brown and for that I am truly grateful. It has been a long time since this park has truly been vibrant and a lot of children in the park. I am so excited, as you can hear in the background, that it is getting ready to be filled with noise. I love to have noise. The voices of our future is behind me. So I look forward to families coming back to Charles Young to reunite. This is a deep, rich area for the East End neighborhood. We will make this safe. We will bring our neighborhoods back. We will bring our children back to the park. We will have football, basketball, run through the water, picnics, family reunions. It is time to come back home. So East End community, come on down to Charles Young and enjoy yourself. You can put your hands together for that one. I just want to say it's another beautiful day in East End as we continue to show our commitment to reinvesting in this community. Um, you have to be intentional and you have to be focused whenever you invest, whether private or public dollars in a community, a historic community like East End with that's seeing a lot of um, investment and kind of turnover in regards to the older infrastructure. And I'd just like to give a shout out to our Parks Department, uh, Monica and her team, Brandy, for reaching out to the Charles Young Advisory Board, the William Wells Brown Community Center and School, and all the other neighborhood partners to get input and to get feedback on what this amenity in this community 
uh, should be. It is uh, such a pleasure to be here to celebrate the opening of Splash, a project that embodies so much that is important to the Community Foundation. Equitable, beautiful parks and playgrounds for everyone, fun, safe, creative water play, a more vibrant, healthy, engaged, and connected neighborhood, community, and city and the power of charitable giving. When I spoke with Monica Conrad a little over a year ago, I conveyed to her the American Water Char Charitable Foundation is looking for the perfect project in Lexington, in our region, to focus on water-based play and uh, nature-based play and so forth, and they have a 250,000 grant that they'd like to contribute. Do you have something? And she mentioned, I think I do. And today we're celebrating that. Um, when she told me the story of the park and the collaboration and the engagement of the community and so many partners, we and the American Water Charitable Foundation knew this was the perfect fit. Three, two, one. Woo one of the biggest stories of the year also happened along Town Branch Trail in the form of the groundbreaking of Town Branch Park destined to be the crown jewel of Lexington's trail system. It's hard to imagine that in just two short years, all of this will be transformed into what you see in the video on my right, a beautiful green space featuring a high-tech stage and 4,000 person amphitheater, a unique children's playground, educational and interactive water play area, a dog park for both small and large dogs, food and beverage offerings, a butterfly garden, an art installation, the Town Branch Commons Trail, a recreation lawn, a reading room, and so much more. The park will also reconnect the community to Town Branch Creek through this space just to my right. That actually is the creek rolling through in the middle of those trees. I became involved in this project at the request of my dear friend and then Mayor Jim Gray. And a few other civic-minded friends and peers of mine were asked to take a task of creating a public park for Lexington that would be privately funded. This was an unprecedented project for our community. Raise 31 million, he told me, <laughs> of private funds to build a world glass park in the heart of downtown for all of the, our residents and visitors to enjoy. What a dream. Our community has never come together to raise that much money for a single cause like this. Some people didn't think we could do it. Actually, there were many people that didn't think we could do it. And I would hear about it every now and then. Maybe they were right. We didn't raise 31 million. We raised 39 million! <laughs> It was Victor Hugo who famously said, there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. Now, I would just add that an idea without funding is nothing more than a hallucination. <laughs> so fortunately and inspiringly, Town Branch Park is a reality and not a hallucination. Now, let me too pay tribute to Ann Bacus, Lexington's grand dame. The late W.T. Young was often described as the bell cow of fundraising and philanthropy. And of course, the bell cow is the one who leads. Well, there's a new bell cow in town. <laughs> this is a groundbreaking. A groundbreaking. Groundbreaking in that we are literally breaking ground, in this case, someone said asphalt, to begin construction of this wonderful park and groundbreaking in the landmark sense, in that we are creating a new landmark, a new destination, a place for community celebration, a place to bring your children and your visitors from out of town, a place to enjoy a brisk walk or an evening stroll. This park is also groundbreaking in a pioneering sense. It is not every day in our city that the private sector comes together to fund something like Town Branch Park. This is a big deal. This park is a gift. 
It's a gift of improved quality of life to each and every one of us, as well as all 325,000 people who live here, as well as their visitors. That's really special. Buildings come and go. Parking lots come and go. But parks can live forever if you take care of them. And I can assure you that um, our board and the people that have donated their time and energy here are going to make sure that this park is not built, but it take, is taken care of. Lexington's Parks Department announced the development of its largest addition in over 26 years with the groundbreaking of Cardinal Run North. Today has been 26 years in the making. Woo! We're finally doing it! <laughs> Back in 1997, this property was given to our community along with Cardinal Run South. An incredible gift of over 190 acres of pristine bluegrass property. So far, the public has only been able to really enjoy 54 of those acres, and that is Cardinal Run South. <clears throat> the bulk of the property has remained inaccessible because we have not been able to afford to develop a usable park, and that ends today. The city is opening the doors to Cardinal Run North with a $10.1 million investment through American Rescue Plan funds. At Cardinal Run North, Lexington will soon be able to enjoy two miles of natural hiking trails, six pickleball courts, a basketball court, four youth multi-purpose fields, a large playground, a dog park with two paddocks, a mile-long paved shared-use trail, two picnic shelters, and many other amenities. There will be something for everyone. These features were selected in part by the public during a public engagement period last year. <clears throat> Almost 900 people filled out the survey. We also followed the guidance in our parks master plan. The two parks, Cardinal Run North and South, are separated by Parker's Mill Road. We will install a crosswalk to make it easy for citizens on both sides of Parker's Mill to enjoy both parks. I remember attending some of the public input sessions on this, and it was really fun to watch constituents and, and other folks uh, across really the, the whole county come in and talk about their ideas and as the mayor just said you saw some of the cool things that are going to be here the trail everyone loves a dog park you've got recreational opportunities out here and just the acreage itself what a what a wonderful gift this is and thank you parks and rec uh, Director Conrad and the whole staff. I know you put a lot of work and time in it. It's great that it's here. You know, there's nothing better than a groundbreaking except for ro ribbon cutting. This has been one of those projects that takes a lot of people. It takes a village to kind of make something like this happen. Um, I think the best thing about this park um, for, for District 10 is um, it is very walkable from most of the neighborhoods uh, on this side of Harrodsburg Road, and I think that those people will be using it extensively. Um, I also think that the best thing about parks is not only do they provide physical, um, uh, physical help for people, um, but the open area, guys, is a great mental, a mental um, and emotional support system for the people here in Lexington. We partnered with Fayette County Public Schools, Girls Who Game, and the District-Wide Minecraft Challenge to create really an inclusive, accessible Cardinal Run North vision utilizing Minecraft gaming and design. So thanks to all those Fayette County school kids who are out here with us today. It's a big deal. We're now working with ATS and Tecton Construction Companies to deliver the park design. 
The park will provide the community with access to beautiful, expansive green spaces, rich with a blend of topography, including forests and karst areas. The addition of the park will increase the portion of the neighborhood within a 10 minute walk to a park and access to natural areas, which are cornerstones of our park's master plan. Our parks team who've already been recognized today, I really can't thank them enough. They're the ones who bring you clean, green, programmable green space every day in our community. Uh, they're really the backbone of our division and the ones who deliver these wonderful park spaces. When we come back, we continue our look back at 2023. I'm Lieutenant Chris Van Brackle with the Lexington Police Department Traffic Unit. Today we are talking about disability accessible parking and the aisles between those parking places. Accessible parking is a valuable and necessary resource for people with disabilities, and that includes the striped area next to accessible parking spots. These are access aisles, and it is illegal to park here, even if you have an accessible parking permit. Police and Lex Park will write tickets when they see vehicles parked in an access aisle or parked in an accessible space without a placard, and the fine is $250. Know where and where not to park. Keep the access aisles clear. Thank you, and drive safe. Welcome back to Lexington Now. In 2023, Lexington's fire department got a major boost in the way of a grant for the training of 27 new EMT paramedics. Like many communities, the post-pandemic years have seen an uptick in call volume here in Lexington. Last year alone, we responded to over 66,000 emergency calls with at least three quarters of those being medically related. In order to adequately respond to those calls, it is critical that we have the absolute best trained and best prepared paramedics here at the Lexington Fire Department. This grant will allow us to not only uh, continue, but to increase the capacity of our paramedic class, putting more highly trained providers on the front lines ready to answer the call. The Lexington Fire Department, with the support of our LFUCG leaders, will continue to seek new and innovative ways to meet the growing needs of our community. As Chief Wells said, today we're talking about something very important in our city. Um, and really it all boils down to good, strong public safety. We know that's the foundation of a great community is good, strong public safety. So today's announcement will make our city safer. Our fire department has won an assistance to firefighters grant that will pay for training and certification of 27 new EMT paramedics, and you're looking at them right now. This is a huge step forward for us. We have the best fire department in Kentucky and in the region, and this grant will help them be even better. All Lexington firefighters are certified as EMT basics. Basic, which is the norm among professional firefighting departments. However, and this is something which is, I didn't know before today, this is wonderful. Half of Lexington's firefighters are certified paramedics, which is highly unusual, especially in Kentucky. And over half of all the state's registered paramedics work in the Lexington Fire Department. Think about that. Over half of Kentucky's registered paramedics. And you've helped train them, Dr. Patty Howard. <laughs> As a registered nurse, this gives me a lot of confidence in our ability to help our residents in emergency situations. Just yesterday, the 22nd anniversary of the 9-11 tragedy, we were all reminded again of the importance of our first responders. 
people who routinely put their lives on the line and run toward the danger while the rest of us are running away. As mayor, one of my responsibilities is to ensure that our firefighters are well-trained and well-equipped. Today's announcement is about an important investment in their training and in Lexington's community safety. So congratulations and thank you so much. We're really excited about this class. Thank you. Lexington Police expanded their capabilities with the opening of the new East Sector Roll Call Center. We joined officials for the ribbon cutting. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail And the twilight's last gleaming Whose rush drives and bright stars This new East Sector Roll Call will position our police closer to major traffic arteries and to neighborhoods along Manowar. It will also save us money in utility expenses and in rent. This roll call is a satellite office where police officers who work in the east sector of city report for duty. We also have a west sector office on Old Frankfurt Pike, a central sector near Eastland, and our headquarters downtown. Police began using this new East Sector office last month. This 7,900 square foot, $4.2 million building was designed with energy efficiency in mind. Using insulated concrete, wall construction, high efficiency windows, and a geothermal heating and cooling system. Work areas all receive natural light. This is one of the most beautiful things about this building is the natural light. And the building can accommodate solar panels if needed. It also incorporates many security features, including a controlled entrance, bullet resistant materials, a separation of private offices and meeting spaces, separate entrance for the public, and police, a storm shelter, separation between public and police parking. It's really state of the art. The building is designed to accommodate a variety of uses. The facilities conference room and roll call are separated by a movable partition that allows for increased space that could be used for community meetings, Where's the neighborhood mayor? Community meetings, <laughs> award ceremonies, and classroom training opportunities. Previously, East Sector Roll Call was located on Center Parkway in a rental facility. This new facility has been built on land already owned by our city. Any building like this is a, is a, a true partnership and a true collaboration. So, you know, I, I got to thank the community for their support, you know, um, <clears throat> since, since I've been here, I don't think we've had a roll call facility built from the ground up, and that takes a lot of support. It, it takes a lot of support from our mayor and her team, but also from our council members, uh, and it means, it means, truly means a lot to me uh, that you all stepped up and supported the police department. And we, we appreciate that very much. This is a satellite facility, but it is built with a purpose for us to be part of the East Sector community, part of not just the community surrounding and not just the school here, but part of whole East Sector. It's inviting and it's accessible. That's what I want you to know about our officers. You know, our officers do a great job every day. They want you to know that they're part of the community too. Lexington police continued their reputation for innovation with the announcement of the new FUSIS system, consolidating assets to further streamline public safety. Today, I'm excited to announce the integration of the FUSIS platform. This new technology will help unify all of our public safety assets, like flock license plate readers, traffic cameras, 
and other cameras operated by private entities uh, who opt in. With this technology, we will be able to solve crimes quicker and provide real-time information to officers. Technology does not replace good police work, but instead it is another tool for our officers and detectives that they can use for safer and more efficient investigations. We will still have officers talking and engaging with the community and following up on any leads. The FUSIS platform also allows businesses, the community, and our partners and residents to engage with us in a more efficient manner and help keep us uh, and our community safe. We are taking an exciting step forward that will make our community safer through technology. Our investment in flock license plate readers has been an enormous success. That is why I proposed back in April that we take the next step and establish the Real-Time Intelligence Center with an additional investment of about $150,000 annually in video-based intelligence software known as FUSIS. We're now ready to begin using FUSIS in our community. It allows us to combine our existing technology assets, including alerts from flock license plate readers and video from traffic cameras, while also allowing the voluntary addition of private security cameras from partnering businesses and even residential cameras. Starting today, businesses and individual citizens here can choose to have a direct impact on the safety of our community through this technology partnership. The software combines these assets into a single source. It's an investigative tool and a resource we can use to streamline emergency response and incident management with real-time information for our first responders. Technology is the future, some say. It's here now. We started this on July 1st, and after about two months, we're almost close to being fully implemented. We nearly have all of our traffic cameras loaded into the system, uh, but our site is live. Our site is connectlex.org. That's where the community, to, community can go to register their cameras and or integrate their cameras into the real-time intelligence center. Registration is voluntary and it's free. Uh, so that's where we see most of our residential uh, cameras. We would like to just know you have a camera in the area. It's good for us to have that ability to go directly to you and also reach out to you electronically to see if you had any video that may be related to a criminal incident that you wish to share. If you are a business and you want to integrate your cameras into the Real-Time Intelligence Center, it allows us to be efficient when we respond to your business in or around your business if a criminal act is occurring. There is a small fee associated with that. That fee allows you to buy the purchase of the core device, which will integrate your cameras, and then there is a yearly subscription thereafter, but that is a nominal fee of $150, I believe. Uh, the good thing about it, you don't have to replace your camera system. It integrates with most every camera system that's out there, so it's just literally a plug and play option that usually can be set up within a week's time once the order actually received. Um, Fuses will then get on the phone and tell you how to connect that, plug it in, and you'll be integrated right with the system. That's all for now, but as always, you can keep up with us on social media, check out the latest traffic updates on X at LexRex, or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.gov. For all of us at Lex TV, I'm Neil Noah, and that's it.